Hey there, St. Paul family and whoever else happens to be watching. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. Wisdom is found in God's word, and most especially through the death and resurrection of Jesus. What is foolishness to the world, Paul says, makes no sense to them, is the very power of God for our salvation. Wisdom is also found in the book of Proverbs, and that is what we are taking a look at in this video series called The Call of Wisdom. Uh, this is episode 32, uh, and if you missed the, the last episode, I have included a link to that in the description uh, down below, or you can find a link in the top corner of your screen. What can you expect in this episode? Uh, well, we're going to cover topics uh, such as when to hold a knife to your own throat. Uh, talk about whether or not there really is such a thing as a free lunch. And we'll examine some advice uh, from a father to a son uh, about avoiding youthful mistakes. All that and more is coming right up, so let's get right to it. I should I probably mention that today we are covering in this episode of uh, Proverbs chapter 23. Uh, we'll be covering the whole thing, uh, verses 1 through 35. And uh, so if you want to follow along in your Bible, uh, you can do that. Proverbs chapter 23. And what I like about Proverbs 23 uh, is that it, it has some longer, more connected uh, verses in it. Not so many uh, what seem to be random and disconnected verses. Uh, and so we, we get a chance to kind of uh, take things as a unit. And we'll, we'll start off, the first unit uh, is in verses 1 through 8. And these verses can be summed up as a, a warning against the, the pursuit of wealth or uh, warning us about the dangers of wealth. But there are different aspects to it. So let's take a look. First of all, verses 1 through 3. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, observe carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Put a knife to your throat? What's going on here? Is this something that we should take literally? Uh, I recall watching the, the documentary a couple months ago about the, the Duggar family and about their uh, fundamentalist Baptist ways. And one of the people who was talking in that documentary described a roommate who she walked in on once who was literally uh, holding a knife to her throat while she had uh, food in front of her. And she was taking quite literally uh, verse 2 here in Proverbs chapter 23. But this verse is not meant to be taken literally. Rather, it is uh, meant to uh, teach us how to curb our appetite, right? You don't have to, when you've got that package of Oreos uh, sitting in front of you, you don't have to try to stop yourself putting a knife to yourself. Okay, no more, right? This is along the lines of, of Jesus saying to us, you know, if your eye causes you to sin, uh, pluck it out and throw it away, all right? Jesus doesn't really want you to pluck out your own eye. He is getting at the very seriousness of temptation and sin and of avoiding sin. And here we are to avoid the sin of, of gluttony. Right? Observe carefully what is before you. Do not give in to all of your urges and your appetites. And really that could be a theme for, for all of this proverb as we'll see here. Let's keep going, verses uh, 4 through uh, 6. Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. Uh, so, in other words, don't uh, be, be careful about ambition for wealth. Make it your goal simply to uh, acquire wealth. Um, if you happen to acquire wealth, fine, right? But uh, that should not be your number one goal. And why? Because when your eyes light on it, it is gone. For suddenly it, it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle toward heaven. Right? Wealth, the stuff of this world, is temporary. Right? You may uh, take, you may gain wealth, and like that, it's it's gone. And certainly, when you die, you don't get to take it with you. Be careful. Then, going on, do not eat the bread of a man who is stingy. Do not desire his delicacies, for he is like one who is inwardly calculating. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Here's where that phrase, uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch, comes in. 
Right. Uh, this this might sound uh, cynical, but uh, knowing who who is offering you something is important. Is it somebody who is stingy, uh, who is tight fisted? The literal term here in Hebrew is someone whose eye is evil, whereas somebody who is generous is described as somebody whose eye is good. Uh, the point here is that uh, be careful uh, what you receive, who you receive it from, because a stingy person is uh, is keeping keeping track, right? And, and one day he's going to, to come calling and say, hey, remember what I did for you? Now you owe me. Uh, how different this is from our Heavenly Father, right? Who gives and gives generously to us without expecting anything in return. He, he is not um, keeping track of, of all of that and, you know, going to come up to you and say, okay, well, now the, now the bill is due. Now you have to do this for me. No, our God is generous, right? Uh, and uh, he delights in giving good gifts to his children. I think of what Jesus says in Luke chapter 14, uh, when he says, when you throw a feast, don't throw a feast for people who can throw a feast for you in return. Rather, invite those who, who have nothing to offer, right? Who, who can't throw a feast for you in return. The, uh, the poor and the disadvantaged, right? Uh, and, and you will receive your reward from your Father in heaven uh, because it is pleasing to him when we do something like that. And that actually leads well into the next section, verses 10 and 11, where it says, Do not move an ancient landmark or enter the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is strong. He will plead their cause against you. This phrase, do not move an ancient landmark, comes up a few times in Proverbs. In fact, it was back in, in Proverbs 22 as well. What is that referring to? Well, uh, in, in ancient Israel, ancient times, uh, property was marked by literal landmarks, often by boundary stones, where it indicated this is where my land begins and, and your land ends. And so somebody could try to, maybe under the cover of darkness, try to move somebody's boundary stone to expand their own property uh, and take away what belongs belongs to you. Think of like a, a neighbor here who might build his uh, fence a, a foot over the property line and, and take some of the property that belongs to you. Right? Don't do this. That's stealing. Uh, and especially don't do it uh, to those who have no way to defend themselves, uh, the disadvantaged and the vulnerable. Why? Because God is on their side. Right? He is their redeemer, he is their defender and advocate, and one day uh, you will be called to account uh, for taking advantage of those uh, who cannot uh, defend themselves. Now, verse 15 begins a section that extends actually all the way into Proverbs chapter 24, uh, but it is uh, Solomon as a father uh, dispensing more advice to his son, uh, giving him wisdom. And we get a sense here that, that Solomon is, is trying to get his son to avoid uh, the same mistakes that he has made. Maybe you've done that as a parent or a grandparent. You know the mistakes you've made. You don't want your children to make the same mistakes, and so you try to, to pass on that wisdom and knowledge. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to have made those mistakes in order to, to pass on uh, the wisdom here, but we know that in the case of Solomon, he, he did make a lot of these mistakes. I think of the book of Ecclesiastes, where Solomon says he's, he's chased after everything in this world, after wealth, after knowledge, after wisdom, after uh, pleasure, after work, all of these things to say satisfy him and he determined that that all of it is is meaningless it is vanity it is a chasing after the wind and so Solomon here is trying to dispense that same sort of knowledge to his son and he says right my son if your heart is wise my heart too will be glad and this uh, this should be uh, resonate with Christian parents and grandparents that what makes us most proud, makes our heart most glad is when we see our children making wise, godly decisions. More important than their academic achievements or what they're able to do on the, uh, the, the sports field or, or court or in any other activity that they're involved in, uh, what matters most uh, is when we see our children uh, following after God, pursuing uh, what God God wants them to pursue. Makes our heart glad. And, and here, again, 
Solomon encouraged his son to curb his appetite, not just his stomach, all right, but his appetite uh, for uh, for wine and strong drink, uh, for for sex, for for sin itself. Right? Starts off verse nineteen. Um, no, nope, excuse me, uh, seventeen. Let not your heart envy sinners. Boy, this is a temptation for all of us. We look at those who are indulging in the things of this world, and boy, it looks like they're having all the fun. Solomon says, no, don't fall into that trap. Do not envy sinners. Rather, continue in the fear of the Lord. That is where true uh, happiness and satisfaction is to be found. So he goes on and warns them against being a a drunkard or a glutton, uh, warns them uh, about uh, spending money on on frivolous things, instead uh, pursuing wisdom and truth and instruction. Right? Again, warns him against um, pursuing sex uh, and uh, mentions the adulteress or that forbidden or foreign woman again that we saw often at the beginning of the book of Proverbs. And then finally, verses 29 through 35 uh, begins with a, a riddle. Right? It says, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? The answer those who tarry long over wine, those who go to try mixed wine. So he's talking here about uh, the drunkard, those who abuse alcohol. And then we have almost a a comical description of a drunkard uh, that uh, is either from life experience or from observing other people, right? Talking about alcohol, in the end, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Your eyes will see strange things, and your heart utter perverse things. Uh, in truth, there is, uh, or in wine, there is truth. Right? Uh, we say those things that we wouldn't necessarily say uh, if we were sober. You will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, like one who lies on top of a mass. Right? Stumbling all over the place, and you'll say, "They struck me, but I was not hurt. Yeah, I didn't feel it. They beat me, I didn't feel it. When shall I wake? I must have another drink." And while this might seem uh, almost a comical description, it's a, a sad description of someone's existence as well. And a warning here, again, from Solomon to curb his appetite for strong drink. And I'm reminded of, of Paul's words in, let's see, it's in uh, Ephesians. Where, where do I have that written down? Oh, i got to turn the video. Yeah, Ephesians 5, verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine. Rather, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, this isn't saying that we, we can't have a drink, anything like that, right? Everything in moderation. Uh, so from beginning to the end, uh, that's what this proverb is talking about. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention, right, we have uh, the, the father giving advice to his son and is, and is well pleased when his son shows wisdom. Well, uh, I think of uh, the perfect son. Jesus Christ, whom God the Father said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And God is well pleased with you because of Jesus. Uh, Because Jesus lived the perfect life and he died the death you deserved. God is well pleased with you. Not because you follow his commandments, not because you avoid sin. That's not what causes God to love you. He loves you uh, and he forgives you for the sake of Jesus alone. For a time of reflection, I want you to consider this question. What wisdom do you wish you had learned earlier on in life? Uh, either that, that somebody had, had told you uh, and, and that you now wish that, that, or now that you would like to, to pass on to somebody that is younger than you. Consider that for a moment and then pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through your Holy Spirit, Grant me discipline, self-control, and wisdom, so that I would follow you faithfully as your beloved son or daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. Uh, Until next time, God's grace and peace be with you all.